Without a doubt, one of the most important concepts I can teach you about the Spanish language is compound phrases. As a Spanish teacher, I often hear students making mistakes with compound phrases. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you what compound phrases are, why they're so important, and some of the most common mistakes we see students making with these phrases. If you wanna learn how to master one of the most important aspects of the Spanish language, then keep watching. Vamos. To start off this video, before I explain exactly what a compound phrase is, I'm gonna explain firstly why they're so important. And reason number one, frequency. Compound phrases come up all the time in Spanish. And whether you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced student, you're going to need to use compound phrases in every Spanish conversation you have. But the second reason, and the reason I introduced this concept, especially for beginners and intermediate students, is that it is a critical strategy for accelerated learning. One of the world's renowned experts in the field of accelerated learning is Tim Ferriss. And in his books and talks, he explains a simple acronym for his process around accelerated learning. The method that I have arrived at after 15, 20 years of testing, looking for a method, a framework that could be applied to everything from language learning to sports is this, up here, this. Tim later goes on to explain that DIS stands for deconstruction, which means breaking down a large task into smaller manageable pieces, selection, choosing the most important pieces to focus on using the 80-20 principle, sequencing, finding a sequence that will allow you to acquire the principles effectively, and then stakes, meaning having some sort of accountability and incentives in place to help you move forward when distractions get in the way. One of the reasons that we run live Spanish classes at Real Fast Spanish is to help with this fourth step. You can use our live classes to add accountability and incentives to your Spanish learning routine. If you're interested in our live classes, head over to realfastspanish.com and look for the Spanish Courses tab. You'll be able to apply for one of our live classes there. Now back to step two in the process, selection. When it comes to selecting the most appropriate grammar to start with, to accelerate your process and shortcut the learning curve in Spanish is to start with compound phrases. So what is a compound phrase? In short, a compound phrase is a combination of a conjugated verb and a verb in infinitive form. An example of a compound phrase in English is, I need to eat. In this example, I need is the conjugated verb and to eat is the verb in infinitive form. We can often identify infinitive verbs in English because they have two in front of them. Next, we can easily swap verbs in and out of this phrase to change its meaning. For example, I need to go, I need to speak. Now note if we change I need to a different verb such as I can, we have to be very careful with the word to. I can to speak obviously doesn't work. We need to say I can speak, I must speak. But then if we go back to, I want to speak, we need to add the to back in. In English, the part of the compound phrase that dictates what goes in the gap between the two verbs is the first verb. And this is exactly the same in Spanish. When you have a compound phrase in Spanish, the first verb will dictate what needs to go in the gap. So if we translate this sentence into Spanish, we get, quiero hablar. Here, Quiero is the conjugated verb, and hablar is the verb in infinitive form. Notice we don't have anything in the gap. In general, this is more common in Spanish, and you can think of most compound phrases in Spanish as being similar to the English compound phrase, I can speak or I must speak, where there is no to in the middle. Also note, just like English, depending on the context, this could be a complete sentence on its own, but some other options might be, Quiero hablar español. I want to speak Spanish. Quiero hablar con ella. I want to speak with her. But for now, we're going to focus on the compound phrase part of the sentence because mastering this will significantly improve your ability to communicate in Spanish. The next step is to swap out the conjugated verb or the verb in infinitive form with any Spanish verb you know to form a range of sentences and ideas. In the last video, the 10 must-know Spanish words and phrases, I introduced the concept of a compound phrase 
without explaining exactly what it was. But if you wanna go back and check out that video, I'll leave a link below in that description. But in that video, I give four must know verbs that you need to know how to use in a compound phrase. And these verbs are quiero, I want, puedo, I can, necesito, I need, tengo que, I have to. So now we can say, puedo hablar, I can speak. Necesito hablar, I need to speak. Tengo que hablar, I have to speak. And of course, you could swap out hablar for any other verb that you know. Tengo que comer, I have to eat. Tengo que dormir, I have to sleep. Tengo que encontrar, I have to find. The next and most important step is to learn how to swap out the conjugated verb for all of its different forms. And it's this step that can significantly reduce the learning curve when it comes to Spanish verb conjugations. So for example, if we start with the verb to want in English, we can conjugate the verb as follows. I want, you want, he or she wants, we want, they want. Notice for a moment that if we remove the words to, I, you, then we are left with the same word except for wants. So in English, these pronouns are critical. In contrast, when we translate the conjugations of want into Spanish, we get querer, which is the infinitive form, quiero, I want, quieres, you want, quiere, he or she wants, queremos, we want, quieren, they want. Notice that, unlike English, all of these conjugations and the infinitive form are different. This means that while there are words in Spanish for I, you, he, she, we, they, they aren't so important because the information of who wants what is already in the verb conjugation. This is a critical step because when Spanish natives are speaking, they will often drop this Spanish equivalent for I, you, we, because it's obvious from the verb conjugation. A lot of Spanish students will try to put these pronouns into their sentences because they're used to it from English. But in Spanish, you absolutely don't need to. The only exception is the he or she form where you might want to say something like el quiere, he wants, or ella quiere, she wants. So now that we have all the conjugations for querer, we can start to put them into our compound phrases. So we have quiero comprar, I want to buy. Quieres comprar, you want to buy. Él quiere comprar, he wants to buy. Queremos comprar, we want to buy. Quieren comprar, they want to buy. And again, we could pause on this last compound phrase and just swap out different verbs for comprar. Quieren encontrar, they want to find. Quieren vivir, they want to live. Quieren ayudar, they want to help. One of the possible challenges that you could face when learning the Spanish language is dealing with all of the verb conjugations. We often get asked from students, how do I learn all of the verb conjugations? There are so many. And this question makes sense because in Spanish, there are 19 verb tenses and moods. There are six conjugations for each mood and tense. And then there are over a thousand verbs in the Spanish language. This combines to make over 100,000 possible verb conjugations. But here's the thing, half of the verb conjugations that exist in the Spanish language never come up in conversation. Of the remaining verb conjugations, there are a lot of patterns, which means that you'll be able to guess or predict what a verb conjugation will be, even if you've never learned it or seen it before. I'll cover this in another video. But lastly, you can reduce the number of verb conjugations that you need to know or guess by using compound phrases. Let's see a few examples. Imagine you want to say in Spanish, I don't sleep well on a plane. This in Spanish is no duermo bien en un avión. Now imagine you can't remember the conjugation duermo, I sleep, because it is an irregular verb conjugation. You can simply replace it with a compound phrase. We can take no duermo bien and simply say, no puedo dormir en un avión. I cannot sleep on a plane. Here we're simply combining puedo, which is a conjugation you already know, with the infinitive form of dormir, to sleep. Let's look at another example. I do exercise every day. This in Spanish is hago ejercicio todos los días. But imagine you can't remember hago 
again because it's an unusual verb conjugation. You can simply replace algo with a compound phrase. Necesito hacer ejercicio todos los días. Or, quiero hacer ejercicio todos los días. Now, while this is a slight change in meaning from the original sentence, it means that you can avoid this awkward conjugation, hago. And despite the fact that it isn't a perfect translation of exactly what you want to say, if you can have this flexibility, it means you can communicate and accelerate this learning curve much faster. Now, this technique gets even more powerful when you want to talk about past actions in Spanish. This is because there are a lot of verb conjugations to refer to the past in Spanish. Now, while this is a video specifically for beginners and early intermediate students, I don't want you to worry too much about past tenses just yet. But for now, I want you to think about this concept of combining compound phrases by using verb conjugations we already know to reduce the learning curve when you get to that step, when you're ready to learn these past conjugations. So let's look at an example. Imagine you want to say, last night, I left the party at 10 p.m. This in Spanish is anoche salí de la fiesta a las 10. So if you can't remember the past conjugation salí, you can say I had to leave or I needed to leave. This could be tuve que salir de la fiesta a las 10. And here again, rather than conjugating salir, we put it in this compound phrase tuve que salir. I had to leave. So as you're on your journey of learning Spanish, every time you encounter a new tense or a new mood, you can simply use this concept of compound phrases to reduce the learning curve at each stage when it comes to verb conjugations. You can simply combine one of these four verbs, querer, to want, poder, to be able to, necesitar, to need, or tener que, to have to, to have to do something, with any verb that you can imagine in the new verb tense. And again, this will reduce the fact that you have to memorize all of these different conjugations for all of these different verbs. The next thing we need to look at is the most common errors we see students making when it comes to compound phrases. And there are three common errors. The first is when students combine two conjugated verbs together in a sentence. For example, I want to live. This in Spanish should be Quiero vivir, where vivir is the infinitive verb to live. But a mistake we often hear is quiero vivo, where vivo means I live. So this sentence is like saying in English, I want, I live. Another common error we see students making is dropping the word that needs to go in between the two verbs when there has to be one there. So for example, I have to eat something. This in Spanish is tengo que comer algo. And again, in this phrase, tengo dictates that we need to have a que there. And the mistake we often hear students making is tengo comer algo, which is kind of like saying in English, I have eat something, where there's clearly something missing from the sentence. And the last common error that we see students making is the opposite of that last error, where they're adding something between the two verbs when it shouldn't be there. So, for example, I need to buy, in Spanish, is necesito comprar. But sometimes students will translate the word to literally into Spanish, which can often be the letter a. So, they might get something like necesito a comprar. And here we need to think of most compound phrases in Spanish as being similar to the phrases in English, I can buy or I must buy. So, your goal now is to form some compound phrases of your own. See if you can combine a conjugated verb and an infinitive verb in a compound phrase and then swap out the conjugated verb or the infinitive verb with any other Spanish verb that you know. See if you can come up with a range of possible sentences you can now form using this simple concept of a compound phrase. Now, if you have any questions about this concept, then please leave them below in the comments. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, then please subscribe. Also, if you want more tips like this, we have a weekly newsletter called Español de la Semana. If you want to sign up for the newsletter, I'll leave a link below in the description. All right, so on that note, thanks so much for watching. Gracias por ver, and I'll speak with you soon. Hasta pronto.